Hey, it's Jeff, welcome back to another video. I've been having a little bit of an issue with spider mites on some of my upstairs plants for about the last two weeks. So I'm gonna show you how to identify it, how I treat the spider mite infestation, uh, and hopefully you can catch it early enough so that it doesn't become a problem with uh, all of your houseplants. So let's get into it. So I'm gonna use these three plants as examples. This is the Ficus elastica burgundy, this is the Monstera silpicana, and we have a golden pothos over there. So two of these plants have spider mites and one of them has a, what I think to be a regular spider web. So I'm gonna show some close-ups in a minute here just so that you can get a good idea of what it is to uh, differentiate between uh, a regular spider web and spider mites. But the first thing you wanna look for or identify is any leaf damage. So right here, you can see this leaf is a little bit yellower or it's starting to yellow compared to the rest of the plant. And there's another leaf down here that it looks like it's got some damage. So that's what you wanna look for, any kind of discoloration on the leaves. Uh, same with this uh, golden pothos. This uh, leaf right here, uh, it usually has a dark deep green color to it. So this one looks kind of faded. It looks a little bit, I guess, unhealthy. Um, yeah, just doesn't look very good. And also, if you see little speckling, just those little dots on the leaves, that's usually pest damage. There's just a close up, but uh, spider mites and uh, thrips, they will basically suck the uh, juices out of the leaves there. Basically, they uh, destroy the cells uh, in the leaf here and it leads to uh, these little kind of speckling. If you see thrips or have thrips, sometimes you'll see like little black dots on the leaves. That's actually thrip poop, so kind of disgusting, but that's just another identifier that uh, you might have a pest issue. Identifying a spider mite issue early is really important because obviously if it gets out of hand, it can be really difficult to treat these guys. So basically the general rule that I give for myself is anytime I water my plants, so whether that's once a week or uh, once every two weeks, I will look the plant over from top to bottom. So checking the top of the leaves, uh, the underside, the stems, uh, basically top to bottom, just uh, give it a, a, a good inspection and then treat them as soon as you find them. I'm gonna show this Ficus Alaska here first. They are all in the same general vicinity. Uh, this one has some spider webs here, I'll show in a second, but the uh, one thing that uh, I guess jumped out for me initially is there is no leaf damage on this plant. Everything looks really, really healthy. There's no yellowing leaves. There's no uh, of those little speckle damage, but um, I like to use a little flashlight. This is just a, uh, a wall plug, uh, basically night light. And what I do is I place the light behind the plant and it illuminates some spider webs. This looks to me to be a regular spider. Um, if you have spider mites, they will basically uh, mainly be on the back side of the leaf. You might see a little bit um, just along the stem there as well. And they're very finely, almost like silk-like um, webbing. They're not just these individual strands like this. These webs are spaced out quite a bit. You won't see that if you have uh, spider mites. They'll be uh, really tightly knit. So um, this one I think has uh, just regular spiders. There's no leaf damage. So I'll show you an example on this one here. Okay, now on the uh, Celta Picana, you can see right here, right there, there's some very small little webs on the underside of the leaf. I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit more. Uh, that is what spider mite webbing looks like. Sometimes you'll see it on the top here as well, and you can actually see there is those little speckling on the uh, leaf here as the uh, light shines through the back. So that is spider mite damage, and that is spider mite webbing right there. So that's what you should look for. See a little bit right here as well. So there's a few areas, uh, this leaf and this leaf, that uh, have some webbing on it. One of the reasons why you might be seeing spider mites on some of your indoor plants as we uh, approach fall and winter is that spider mites prefer a warm and dry environment. Where I am here in Canada, the winter months are extremely dry, so our humidity is probably around that 30% or so. And obviously we have furnaces in our home. So these are ideal conditions for spider mites. So this is what I currently use for my spider mite uh, issues. It's uh, Safer's Insecticidal Soap. Uh, it basically is fatty 
acids. So the way this works is it coats soft bodied insects like spider mites and aphids, that sort of thing. And it basically dries and dehydrates them, rendering them uh, immobile or useless. So that's how this uh, product works. You spray it on the leaves, uh, let it dry, and then after it's dry, this product is no longer effective. And you'll probably have to treat it again in about 10 days. Just keep treating it until you no longer see an issue. I used to use Dawn dish soap, uh, dilute it in water as kind of a homemade um, insecticide or insecticidal soap, but um, after it damaged my philodendron golden goddess, I no longer use it or recommend it for that. Uh, just doing a little bit of research. Dawn dish soap is actually a detergent. It's not a true soap and it does actually strip the, uh, I guess the plant leaves of its natural uh, protectants and it can leave it uh, susceptible to more bugs and pests. So I'm actually gonna cut off some of these leaves that are just looking uh, a little bit sickly. Like this one here, I'm just using my pruning shears. They're a little bit lower on the stems here as well, so I'm okay making sure I'm not cutting the stem. I'm gonna throw these out in the trash. This one here too, like it's just looking not good. And surprisingly, they're actually all the lower leaves. Since this is a small plant, I'm okay uh, spraying it off here on the plant table. It's on my little drip tray here, but if you have something a little bit larger, just either take it outside or take it in the bathroom, just spray it off in the bathtub. Just make sure obviously you have good uh, ventilation. So open the window, turn the fan on, um, and also wear a mask as this, uh, this the, like the fumes, they don't smell very good. So basically what I do is I put it to the spray setting. I don't know if you can see it. And I just lightly spray off the leaves making sure you coat the top here first. Oh, it's not spraying, but okay, there. And then also, of course, where the spider mites are, get the backside of the leaf. And after you spray it, I just kind of rub the backside as well as the stem and do it on each individual leaf. That way you know that this product has been in contact with the bugs it has to have contact with the bugs to work it has to coat their little uh their little soft bodied whatever you coating shells whatever i think i got them all and where's that one this one right here it had some stuff on the back side so you don't have to spray like all the dirt and the pot and everything just make sure the leaves are coated um, and like I said, especially the underside of the leaves, just uh, set that aside in a well ventilated area and just let it dry and that should be it. You can spray the product off or rinse it off with some water afterwards, which I typically like to do, like I said, with a, a high pressured uh, spray bottle, just kind of blast off anything that you may have missed underneath the leaves there. Um, some of the larger plants like that uh, ficus elastica, if you have a larger plant or a fiddle a fig, you can actually take it outside and just blast it off uh, with the hose. Sometimes that, uh, that pressure and cold water will just uh, clean the, the leaves uh, pretty good just by some uh, higher pressure. So I brought my ficus elastica to my shower here and I'm going to spray it off with the uh, spray bottle that I was uh, talking about. So this is another good effective way. Um, obviously I can't take this outside right now and spray it off with the hose because it's snowing. So um, this is a little pump action spray bottle. Just pump it up and it basically blasts off the leaves quite nicely. Um, I can adjust the nozzle here as well. Give it a, like a larger or stronger stream and then get the back side of the leaves as well. Just something like that is a, another good effective way for just cleaning off your plant, but also blasting off those uh, spider webs and spider mites. I should mention before I get a million comments down in the comment section, I bought this at Walmart for like four or five dollars. I've also seen these at some of my local dollar stores. It's uh, it's one of my favorite plant tools or accessories uh, that I use in my plant collection. So I think that's me pretty much it for this spider mite video. I hope you found it useful and hopefully it helps you uh, battle spider mites in your plant collection. Okay, now I'm going to go upstairs and show you what it's like outside. But uh, thanks again for watching everyone. Take care. Bye.